Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Lost with Luke. Today I'm in my hammock and I'm going to be discussing theories of the universe. There's some facts in there. Oh, basically I have no academic training in this. I have my, one of my best friends, Timmy Ferber, shout out to him, is getting his PhD in astrophysics. So like I, we, I like, that's a good source. Um, but these are theories anyway, so it's, you know, it's all hearsay. I probably am gonna get them wrong. So if you if you hear something that's like not even correct in theory world, let me know because um, that's likely to happen. Let's have an existential crisis. Okay, so there's there's three the universe is here at least with you know for us we think so. Um, and there's three ways that apparently are like the only three ways that it seems that the universe is gonna end, which is a fun topic. This won't happen for billions of years. We'll, we'll all be gone anyway. Our sun will be gone. And um, so it's just it's just good fun, really. The first one was called the Big Crunch. Um, basically, the density of matter is so high that it overcomes the force of gravity, creating one piece of matter. So like the way that the universe we know is expanding right now, based on how matter is further apart incrementally, because um, we can measure that, I guess. I've never done it. But um, basically, the theory is that, like I said, the, the density of matter gets so high that it stops expanding and starts crunching, um, basically to an infinitesimally small point that dismantles the space-time things. It's, there's no space, there's no time, there's just a single point. And that maybe that's God, you know? That could be him. The next one is the big freeze. So the universe is gonna continue to expand like it already is to the point where uh, no light touches anything. And so there's no heat and we basically reach absolute zero as a universe and everything is just cold and dead. It's a big freezer, God's freezer. Go big. The big rip is the third one. So basically dark energy is a thing. And I think, I think they think it's a thing because gravity, the force of gravity on matter doesn't account for the way that matter is moving, I think. So there has to be something else that's there creating more gravity for us to be observing what we're observing, and by we, I mean them. So dark energy will expand, causing atoms to disintegrate. You know, I don't know what that means. But it sounds like the end, but it could be the beginning. It could be a cycle. It could keep happening, you know? Life and death on a bigger scale, you know what I'm saying? So it's crazy that we that there's three ways that they're pretty sure like, yeah, this is how it's all gonna end. Like, okay. Uh, it doesn't really, doesn't really change, doesn't really do anything for me. That's cool, love it, but like, eh. Next. So we can look at things, right? And, and, uh, the, sp the speed of light is a thing. So when we look at stars, we're seeing stars, but how they were, however far away they were from us, because it's taking time for the light to travel to hit our eyes, right? So apparently we can look 14 billion light years away and see a wall of color that is uh, like, like an afterglow of the Big Bang. So something happened, was, something was going on called the Cosmic Microwave Background. Okay. Uh, which which uh, ties me into my next point, which is the hologram theory, which is that we live in a two-dimensional plane projected in three dimensions. Some, some smart man came up with this because there's like a spot in the, in the Cosmic Microwave Background color, color wheel wall where there's like a, I don't know, an app, uh, maybe it's black, maybe it's just different. And that, that means maybe that we were collided with another universe, kind of like two little bubbles colliding to create ours. I don't know. I'm just spitting. I'm just a regurgitator, so. What? Hologram theory is consistent observed pattern of the cosmic microwave background. That's, it's too much for me. I, my little brain is, is puttering out here. Okay, moving on. The next one is called the multiverse theory. Is this thing too high? 
I think I'm too high. I'm not. It's just, you know. Um, the multiverse theory. Okay, so like I was saying, little bubbles floating around in an inf inflationary sea. So inflation. It's the space is, is growing, but the bubbles, I think, remain a constant. Like, uh, like I said, there's like a cold spot in the cosmic microwave background that could mean that our bubble collided with another bubble, creating a new universe out of two bubbles. Okay. Gravity. The force of gravity cannot be responsible for the speed of some astronomical observations. Okay, I kind of already said this. Clusters of galaxies seem to be held together by something more powerful, like dark matter can't see it but we think I think that's that's our excuse for like all right well there's more gravity here than than there should be based on mass or something else going on is dark dark matter okay simulation theory um basically seeing how like quickly we went from cavemen to like developing the first video games whatever it was Tetris or the little bouncy ball between the thing and then how quickly that we've gone from the bouncy ball and the thing or Tetris to virtual reality and like, um, you know, making videos that are just like indistinguishable from reality is more likely than not that given how old the universe is, that someone or something has created us in a virtual reality. Either it's like a video game or like, just an alternate reality you know like maybe like god is just like a a, a, do, a really smart man in his mom's basement eating nachos coding a, you know coding a, a game and that's okay with me if this is a simulation then that's fine i like it like what am i gonna escape this thing like neo and like go go to like the real world where like my family isn't there and like coda pup's not there and like you know, no, I'll take this. This is great. I like this simulation. Keep it running. Good job. This is, this, thank you. You know, keep eating nachos or what did I say? Cheetos? Fire, dude. Fire. Cosmic ego grip. The laws of physics has a handful of fundamental constants that determine the force of gravity, like uh, electromagnetism and subatomic forces. These numbers could be at any value, but if they were even slightly different, we wouldn't exist. So that makes you think like, oh, there's a designer, you know, like the way that things are so specific that like it must be for us. It must be that like, so that there must be a God that, that made this. Maybe. That's the closest, that's the closest thing to proof of God that I've ever heard of. Well, it's like, it's like that on the one hand, like we're here or the universe is here to cater to us, but it's like, well, no, we're only here because the universe is the way that it is. The universe isn't the way that it is for us. Like, it, it could be that... Come on. It could be that, but, like, we wouldn't be here if, if these fundamental principles weren't in place. So, like, it's not, there's not a lot going on there for me. Uh, this might be a fact. I don't know. We don't touch anything. Our atoms repel other atoms. So we're never actually touching anything. We're all just floating. Again, it doesn't really do anything for me. If that's the case, then like, keep it up. I'm, it's still working. I can still, I can still do things. I don't need to be, I don't need to be touching anything. So next, the dark force theory is that there are alien civilizations out there and like many of them, but they're silent and off the maps and hostile and they're scared because they've endured interplanetary planetary, uh, warfare and they just don't want it. So they're all just hiding and they're scared and they're hostile and that's a spooky one. I hope, I hope, you know, that they're doing okay, that they don't have hammocks. Dead universe theory is the cosmos is a remnant of a previous dead universe. Again, fine. You know, my, my Ikebana vases are remnants of a dead tree. Like, they're beautiful. Just fine with me. We can be remnants. I do that. I hope this wasn't depressing. It's not really, it's, um, it can, it can send you into a spiral. I hope I didn't do that to anybody. We're very small. I'm pretty small. I'm like five. I tell people I'm 5'10", I'm 5'9". 
I don't even know if that's true. We're very small. But the universe is just infinitely big and the fact that, from what we can tell, we're the only living, much less sentient beings. And that's just like so incredibly special, you know? Even if there are sentient beings, like in another galaxy, like we're the only sentient be beings in this galaxy, that's still incredible, like that's so incredible. I don't think, I don't know what's going on with the whole alien thing, but I think we found some elements or something that could give way to the potential of life um, out there. So like, that's cool, but like, look what we're doing, you know, holy moly. So basically we're really special. You're really special. Be sweet. Love you guys. Hit the buttons. I'll see you next time. Peace.